Hey guys, let's talk about the non-specific uh, innate uh, immune response. And what they're getting ready to show us in this uh, animation is like if you get a, a splinter, uh, what are some of the things that happens uh, in order to, uh, number one, uh, bring uh, immune cells to the area and get rid of uh, possible pathogen and things like that. So let's tell you, this is, again, this is not the acquired, this is the, or the adapted, this is the uh, non-specific, or sometimes called innate, uh, or immune, acute immune res uh, uh, inflammatory response. The inflammatory response is an important nonspecific defense against tissue damage. It begins when injured tissue cells release chemical signals that activate the endothelial cells of... Okay, so let's talk about a nonspecific uh, defense against tissue damage or and it starts the healing process. So understand, they're using a splinter coming in, but this could be occurring uh, along your digestive tract and your muscle tissues uh, due to internal sources of things. Uh, this happens to, to, to use a splinter from an external source, but this, these concepts occur uh, all throughout your body if you have inflammation. Of nearby capillaries. Within the capillaries, adhesion molecules called selectins are displayed on the activated endothelial cells. Okay, so when there's been damage, of course you can see the little bacteria or microbes or pathogens, it could be viruses, but you, typically if they're shaped like that, they're probably meant, meant to be a, a bacteria. But when this happens, uh, there these uh, mast cells start activating these selectins. Basically there's a little like uh, sticky substances that, that pop up on the, on the inside of the blood capillary, which is a little bitty blood vessel. And uh, they're called selectins, so we can make an inference there. Ins and ins, probably a protein molecule uh, that will uh, play a specific role here in just a moment. These adhesion molecules attract neutrophils, slow them down, and cause the neutrophils to roll along the endothelium. As the neutrophils roll along the endothelium, they encounter chemicals that activate integrins, which are adhesion receptors on their surfaces. These integrins then tightly attach to adhesion receptor molecules on the endothelial cells. Okay, so there's that, uh, first of all, backing up, a neutrophil is one of the uh, granulocytes. It's a, it's a lymphocyte. It's a type of white blood cell that, it's a phagocyte, meaning it engulfs things and destroys things. Uh, there are other ones called monocytes, macrophages. Uh, those are all parts of your lymphatic system, your lymphocytes, your white blood cells that uh, are, are destroyers and, and of pathogens. Uh, but again, here's this concept of molecular shape again. Uh, when these mast cells send, ki send kignal, signals out, it activates this receptor, this adhesion receptor, and it binds to this, uh, these uh, integrins and uh, cause them to stick and see what happens next. This causes the neutrophils to stick to the endothelium and stop rolling. This accumulation of neutrophils along the walls of the capillary is referred to as margination. Now there's another concept, I can't remember if this one talks about it, but there's chemotaxis, uh, which I think it will. The, the very presence of bacteria sometimes releases uh, chemicals, uh, specifically cytokines and things like that, that will attract, it's like, it's like they pick up a chemical scent. They start smelling it, and so they, and through this, uh, the selectin activation, the mast cells, they, they, all these white blood cells just start gathering to the size, kind of like, uh, the Walking Dead, all the zombies, they smell the flesh, and they start just accumulating and gathering towards where the, where the invaders are. The inflammatory mediators released by the injured tissue bring about changes in the environment that cause mast cells to degranulate and release histamine. Some of you may be familiar with a histamine reaction. A lot of times it's redness, swelling, uh, and, you, and whenever you are an allergic reaction, when you start having one of those reactions, a lot of times you take an antihistamine, and that uh, slows down this process and prevents all the redness and swelling that most people have with an allergic reaction. Histamine causes vasodilation and an opening of the junctions between the endothelial cells, allowing fluid and leukocytes to leave the capillary and enter the infected tissue. So again, whenever those mast cells start degranulating and releasing the histamine, it causes those blood vessels to start expanding. When they expand, they open up uh, gaps in the cell wall or in the vessel wall, and that allows uh, other fluids, uh, more red blood cells, oxygenated blood, uh, along with these uh, neutrophils and other monocytes and macrophages to get into the area where there may be an infection.
The neutrophils now undergo dramatic changes in shape and squeeze through the endothelial wall into the interstitial tissue fluid. This process is called extravasation. The neutrophils, followed by other types of phagocytes, are attracted to the damaged site by chemotactic substances released by bacteria and tissue breakdown products. That's the, the uh, term I was talking about earlier. These, the very presence of the bacteria, they almost like give themselves away because they release some chemicals in, in, when they get into our tissues. And like I said, the white blood cells can almost sniff out. And they move in there through a process called chemotaxis where they chemically pick up and move towards the area and uh, start breaking things down. They ingest and destroy invading bacteria. So that's uh, endocytosis, a specific kind of endocytosis called phagocytosis, where they actually physically bring in uh, like physical content. Uh, it'll be digested, and then the, the waste will be released through exocytosis. The inflammatory response is an important nonspecific defense. Oops. Let's go back, Let's go back over here. Damage site by chemotactic substances released by bacteria and tissue breakdown products. They ingest and destroy invading bacteria. All right, uh, let's take a look at this one right here. I want look, this is another animation that uh, kind of does the same thing. If you're going to look at it, go through the one, two, and three. It's got a lot of more uh, detail to it. I want you to take, take a look at this phagocytosis summary. Certain immune system cells, such as macrophages and neutrophils, utilize phagocytosis to ingest and destroy invading microorganisms. These phagocytes attack and destroy invaders using chemotaxis, adherence, ingestion, digestion, and elimination. Chemo okay, so you can see this right here is producing what's called lysosomes. Lysosomes have very, very strong digestive enzymes in them, and they'll actually fuse this uh, vesicle here that contains the pathogen and uh, release the enzymes, and they'll just go to work breaking down this thing in little bits and pieces, and then it's going to be eliminated, like it says, through exocytosis, exo exiting, leaving, cyto the cell. So it's a process where the large sub amounts of substances are expelled through the cell membrane. Tactic chemicals attract the phagocytes to the site of infection and opsonins aid in adherence of the phagocytes to the surfaces of the microorganisms. So these little extensions here are, are apsonins. They're the extensions of the, of the membrane that you get the mo molecules here. So these little bits and pieces here are the antigens of the pathogen uh, sticking out of those name tags. And then uh, they start pulling them in uh, for ingestion and digestion. So you can see the lysosomes are combining, the enzymes are breaking them down into bits and pieces, and they're being expelled through the process of exocytosis. All right. So that's the normal uh, inflammatory response. Uh, you get a cut, something goes wrong, uh, you got the increased blood flow, all these cells start uh, start accumulating, uh, they start sticking to the cell walls because those selectins start coming up and they got the molecular uh, receptors and they bind to it. Mast cells release histamine that causes those blood vessels to open up and start creating gaps in the cell walls so those things can actually squeeze through into the uh, into that infected area and then they just start in ingesting and digesting and spitting out the bits and pieces to be metabolized and flushed out uh, using your lymphatic system and, and blood vessels. So that's kind of the, the rundown on the normal situation. I want you to uh, take a look at this link, this right here. How does the inflammatory response end? This is from my website, I believe it's, uh, let's see here. It'll be in this uh, inflammatory response here, uh, the first wave inflammatory response. If you gotta scroll all the way to the bottom though, when you get there, and I'll talk to you about how it ends, because that's the problem in America. We, we have chronic low-grade inflammation going on that seems to never end because of our lifestyles and things we're putting in our bodies. So understand, there's a whole concept called apoptosis, right? That's basically cell suicide is what happens. And under normal situations, uh, cells are only meant to live a certain amount of time. Uh, so uh, they can, a couple of different ways they can die. It says uh, 
but first of all, it says when cells of the body die in normal fashion by being irreparably damaged or by being deprived of nutrients, it's known as necrotic death. So that's normal death. Uh, but recently, research has shown that cells can also be killed another way by committing suicide. Uh, on receipt of a certain chemical signal, most cells of the body can destroy themselves, and that's known as apopti ap apoptotic death. And But there are two main ways they can do it. Number one, they can receive a signal telling them to, to uh, be destroyed, or number two, uh, they have a certain amount of time when they're going to be destroyed, but other cells say, hey, stay alive. Like your helper T cells will a lot of times uh, send a signal to these, these macrophages and neutrophils and say, hey, stay alive, stay alive, because they're still picking up the presence of these, of these foreign invaders in the cells. So once, that, uh, once they, the, uh, they, they pick up that all the pathogens have been destroyed, then they'll, allow, they'll stop sending that stay alive signal, and they'll allow the, uh, all those neutrophils and macrophages uh, to die. And that's the normal response, how it should end. So once everything's been healed up, it should, uh, it should you know, the helper T cells stop sending that stay alive signal, and all those things stop dying. But the problem is, when you're chronically inflamed, uh, your body's always picking up the signal that there's something bad in, in your system going on, and so those helper T cells stay alive, and they keep that, si that stay alive signal going. So all these uh, cells that are destroying unknown pathogens start getting confused and go haywire and they start attacking our own tissues and uh, releasing those inflammatory chemicals that can cause uh, lots of tissue damage. So it's like a quagmire of events because of the things we're putting in our body. Uh, that inflammatory response, this whole situation right here, uh, never really stops. So again, uh, you need to make sure you take a look at this, some of this stuff and kind of have an understanding of how it's all going to be fitting together here. We've got the normal inflammatory response when things get in, uh, just how your body naturally heals. And the problem is uh, a lot of times we never get uh, that stay alive signal never goes away because our helper T cells and everything else are picking up the presence of all these uh, foreign antigens that shouldn't be there. Uh, like I said, the body says, if foreign antigen is not eradicated from the body or the helper T cells do not recognize that fact, or if the immune cells receive the stay alive signal from another source, then chronic inflammation may develop. So again, uh, this last paragraph here uh, is going to be very, very important in, uh, in what we're talking about here because it's very, very applicable because something's going wrong due to the presence of these things in our body that we're putting in there through diet, uh, lifestyle factors, things like that, that's keeping us chronically uh chronically inflamed so this process just never stops like a low-grade smolder all right so again i hope this helped uh be studying be uh, looking over these resources uh and best of luck have a good day